Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Israel Brief, albeit from Helsinki. And as always, the Israel Brief is brought to you by Lay of the Land and hosted by me, Roleen Marks. Now, um, I'm on location for the next couple of days. I'm delighted to be speaking at Limud on Sunday. This is an event for the Jewish community and anybody who's interested in learning a little bit more about Jewish culture, Israel, and all sorts of interesting topics. So uh, a little bit of a different look, but as always, we bring you those headlines every Monday to Thursday, no matter where in the world we happen to be. So let's take a look at those top stories. And yesterday we brought you the story of the Al Jazeera reporter Shirin Al Akla, who was caught in a very, very intense crossfire between the Israeli security forces and Palestinians in the town of Jenin. Now, Jenin is a hot spot for incitement and a hotbed of terror activity. In fact, it has been the focal point over the last couple of weeks as Israel has endured a wave of terror that has seen 19 people murdered, 17 Israelis and two Ukrainian nationals. And this does seem to be an area where the security forces are honing in on counter-terror operations. Yesterday morning, while she was covering the raid, the arrests, uh, she was unfortunately um, caught in the crossfires and died. Now, we want to express our sincerest condolences to the Al-Akla family for this uh, irreplaceable loss. And, and also, just as journalists, as media people, it is an imperative that we have a free and fair media in a democracy. And uh, we are well aware of the many, many journalists who risk their lives on the front line to bring us the stories that we see in our media every single day. But here are the updates as we currently have them. Yesterday, the IDF announced that they would be opening an investigation into the circumstances around the, the death of Shirin al-Akla. Now, Israel has asked the Palestinians for a joint investigation into exactly what happened and who is responsible for shooting the reporter. The Palestinians have steadfastly refused, saying they'll conduct their own independent investigation and report into the United States. Now, the Palestinian coroner uh, conducted an autopsy yesterday, and he said that it, as of yet, it is impossible to tell who is responsible, which side is responsible for shooting the fatal bullet. We do know that Israel's officials have requested the bullet so that they can run ballistics report on that. So where we stand at the moment, despite widespread condemnation from the media and the apportioning of blame, we still don't know which side is responsible for the killing of the journalist. We know that whatever side did it, it probably was not intentional. The European Union and the United States have demanded an immediate investigation. And speaking at her funeral earlier today, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas says that he will take Israel to the ICC for her death. Countries like Qatar and South Africa and actress Susan Sarandon have roundly condemned the, the circumstances. However, again, we stress we still don't know who is responsible. And media outlets like the Jerusalem Press Club, as well as the New York Times, have stressed that this is all pending an investigation. In other news, a Palestinian man was shot last night as he charged at Israeli police officers just outside the old city in Jerusalem. He was armed and yelled, Allahu Akbar, and it is believed that he intended to carry out a terror attack and he was then neutralized. Earlier today, Israeli security forces arrested two men in connection with aiding and abetting the terrorists who, who carried out the deadly terror attack in the town of Elad last Thursday. Thursday after Yom Ha'atzma'ot, Israeli Independence Day. 
And now we go to the Ukraine, which is not too far from where I am at the moment. And a Ukrainian Jewish soldier has appealed to Israel to please help with a, a group of soldiers, including 20 Jewish soldiers who are currently besieged in the town of Mariupol. Mariupol has been making a lot of headlines lately because of the conditions and the siege that Russian forces have laid to the coastal city. He says that the situation is absolutely untenable and has really appealed to Israel to send some kind of rescue battalion to help them out. Meanwhile, a United States-based organization that looks after the welfare of righteous Gentiles in Ukraine have said that they intend to embark on a mission to rescue righteous among the nations from war-torn Ukraine. The organization calling themselves Jewish Foundation for the Righteous say they intend to bring all those righteous. Now, these are people who saved the lives of Jews, Jewish family, Jewish children during the Holocaust to a place of safety, saying we owe them that debt of gratitude. And our final story, the other day I brought you the big news that pop rock band Maroon 5 were in Israel playing two packed out concerts in Pakayakon in Tel Aviv. Well, Adam Levine, the front man, announced to a packed audience last night that his band in turn... His band, rather, it's a jet lag, I'm exhausted, I'm sure you can tell, intends to return to Israel a thousand times. And we couldn't be happier. And thank you, Adam. Thank you for ignoring those voices from the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, who we know threatened you, threatened your fellow band members to the point where you had to switch off comments on your social media. Well, let us just tell you, we might be a small country, but boy, we are loud and we are proud and uh, we welcome you back with open arms anytime you choose to return. So that's it for the Israel Brief for today. Before I catch up on some much needed sleep, I really am uh, operating here on fumes. Just a reminder that you can check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our Facebook page is at Lottle's site. If you haven't already joined our growing community, please either like or follow us, share our content. And we're on YouTube. Our channel is at The Israel Brief. Please consider hitting that red subscribe button so that we can get as many people hearing Israel's side of the story, especially when it comes to crucial stories like the shooting of Shirin al-Akla and all that uh, uh, is happening in the mainstream media. And don't forget, we're on Twitter as well, and you can find us at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Rolene Marks. On location in Helsinki, Finland, this is the Israel Brief. Thank you for watching and I will see you again on Monday. In the meantime, please have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe wherever you are. Shabbat Shalom and see you on the other side of the weekend.